This is a very special episode on the Vancouver Life channel as we got the opportunity to interview Glenn Sanford, the founder and CEO of eXp Realty. eXp Realty was created 15 years ago and has already grown to be the third largest in the world, representing over 87,000 agents in 24 countries. In 2022, eXp was the number one brokerage in the world based on transaction count. In that same year, eXp saw revenues of $4.6 billion, which was a 22% increase from the previous year. A truly remarkable achievement by any standard, and you can tell by Glenn's energy in this interview that he is just getting started. eXp is the world's first digital brokerage, and this revolutionary model has removed the brick and mortar offices and the franchise layers that come with so many expenses, and in turn, takes this revenue and shares it with its agents. This model works so well that in 2022, eXp gave back to its agents a sum of $240 million US through its revenue share program and its equity benefits through stock. This makes every agent at eXp an owner and creates a financial alignment between the agents that ultimately wants them to see each other succeed and a culture of success and growth and collaboration. In this episode, Glenn shares some of the most recent exciting developments at the company, as well as some insights into what we can expect next for both the agents as well as the consumers who are buying and selling homes. He then gets into the trends that he's witnessing within the landscape and touches on some of the competition that's emerging, as well as a discussion about, hey, is there actually going to be digital only brokerages in the future or will there remain space for the brick and mortar traditional model to continue? This was a really eye-opening and inspiring conversation with someone who has truly altered the course of real estate on a global level. For those interested in learning more about this life-changing brokerage, please feel free to reach out using any of the contact information below. And now let's get into our conversation with Glenn Sanford, founder and CEO of eXp Realty. So welcome. Today we have the man, the myth, the legend, Glenn Sanford, creator of eXp, speaking with us today. And uh, we want to be very courteous of the time that you are giving us today. So thank you so much. And let's just dive right into it. And first question we have for you right off the top is eXp has, has exploded globally here. And you guys are now operating in 24 countries around the world. So you must get incredible insights and data when it comes down to the, the home buyer and seller behaviors. Uh, can you share some of the biggest trends that you've noticed in consumer behavior recently? Hey, 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 Dan. Hey, hey, Ryan. Thanks for having me on. You know, um, you know what we're we're noticing. Obviously, we in, in the U.S. and I think up into Canada as well. I mean, interest rates have went up dramatically. Um, you know, home home buyers have uh, have slowed down um, their purchases. Home sellers are having to actually do price reductions to actually get homes to move. Um, you know, and of course we've, uh, you know, the market goes in cycles so every, you know, 10 or so years or so there's some cycle or some shock to the system. And so this one's a little bit more systemic in that it's, uh, you know, driven uh, by the U S fed and other, you know, um, you know, banking uh, institutions around the world that are basically raising interest rates, attainment and inflation, and of course, uh, houses and house pricing uh, is in there as well. So what we're we are seeing is is uh, uh, you know fewer buyers in the marketplace, and the ones that are in the marketplace are spending more time doing more research because they can. Um, so they're looking at more properties before they pull the trigger, uh, and uh, and then home sellers are, uh, I think, uh, a lot of more opportunistically selling in the you know the last. 12 to 18 months because of high prices. Now uh, the sellers that are uh, that need to sell uh, are are having to now deal with you know the the fact that they're going to need to probably price reduce in order to get competitive enough for buyers to say hey that's a that's a good deal that's worth my time and to actually pursue purchasing that property. So that's kind of the dynamics that uh, that we're seeing uh, now. It's uh, to some extent it it lags in other parts of the world. So in in Europe, in Australia, in 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 um, in some of these other markets, uh, they're not seeing that happening as quickly. But here, uh, domestically, we're certainly um, seeing those uh, those slowdowns take place. 
spoken like a true realtor. We could tell that he used to be <laughs> had boots on the ground like, uh, like the rest of us here. And yeah, fascinating to kind of be able to see the shifts happening on literally a global perspective. Um, so a quick follow-up question then, how is eXp then utilizing that kind of same data to help the agents and ultimately create a better experience for their clients? You know, one of the cool things about eXp, and this, you know, it might sound like I'm tooting my own horn, uh, maybe at some level we, we, we are, uh, but, you know, we have the lowest cost to operate real estate brokerage platform um, in the marketplace. And, and so for those of you who aren't aware, you know, eXp um, has, you know, the minimum physical bricks and mortar footprint that's required by the various regulatory bodies in the various markets that we compete in. Some cases, we don't actually have to have any physical offices. In other markets, we have to have uh, an office with a door and the auditors need to come in and do all the stuff. So it's just each market's a little different, but we operate with the, the smallest bricks and mortar footprint. And why that's important is when the market slows down, um, you know, w the way we reduce costs is we, ha we need fewer transaction level support people, which we did some of that trimming back last year, but we can still invest in um, the products and services that agents need for their consumers. And so the, the things like uh, you know, last year, uh, we bought Zucasa. So many of you will recognize the name um, that, uh, uh, you know, it was owned by Rogers through about 2014, 2015. And, uh, and they were spending upwards of a million dollars a month marketing that brand across Canada. Wow. Eventually, they were told by regulators that they couldn't run a paper brokerage. It ended up uh, getting uh, sold to a, a small team in, in, in Toronto uh, that then grew that to a 150-person brokerage in wow. Toronto, but still generating leads across Canada and every market through, uh, through the uh, Korea feed. And, and now uh, that they're underneath the EXP umbrella, we're actually able to start to actually expand that back out. And it's a great lead gen tool that consumers already recognize in Canada to actually get leads back in the hands of agents and connect them with, with, an, with, an, with an agent. And, and so we're excited about that. We, we were the first company to bring a platform called uh, KV Core to Canada. Um, and so that's been a, 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 you know, that's been growing. And so again, for, for those that aren't familiar with KV core, it's a, it's a referred to it in, in real estate parlance as an IDX, uh, or a website with properties that consumers can search and then be connected to an agent. Uh, and, uh, and, and so we really just continue to sort of build a, a robust tool set and then also looking at you know what are the innovations what are the things that we can bring in that can really make it a great consumer experience which then you know connects to agents we we've got another cool um thing that we're working on right now uh and i'll, I'll share it here uh and probably this may be the first place that's heard in canada <laughs> um but cool. um we we did a uh, a partnership in the U.S. with a company called Realty.com. Um, some really neat uh, guys, the, uh, Lance Custon uh, has been an agent, uh, and then he, but he and his business partner uh, sold a company called Hostgator. They developed a, 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 um, a hosting platform company that they sold uh, for hundreds of millions of dollars back a number of years ago. And um, for the last seven years, they've been acquiring domains in the residential real estate space, and Lance has been actually listing and selling properties on it. So Realty.com, he, he bought, but he also bought Realty.ca. And, mm. and so Lance actually moved his personal real estate license to eXp um, here just a couple months ago. But uh, embedded in that is a, a partnership on Realty.ca, to actually launch that also across Canada to generate, um, you know, uh, consumer and agent uh, connections. Uh, you know, uh, Realtor.ca currently is in this sort of negotiation to potentially, you know, run it as a almost a separate prop, uh, company generating leads for agents, but it's uh, certainly not uh, brokerage um, specific and there's no sort of exclusivity around it. But I'm always looking at what are the different tools and ways to connect 
agents and 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 consumers and of course the internet for for lack of a better way to describe it is the single biggest lead gen source for people that don't know each other yet compared to when i got mm. the business you know 20 years ago it was the homes magazine and it was the <laughs> uh, uh the, the 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 pictures of agents on on uh, bus benches. I mean, that was the lead gen uh, strategy. <laughs> it turns out there's still a lot of bus benches with realtor picks on it. Um, but uh, uh, the, you know, the reality is that's kind of like uh, if if you just need to throw away money uh, to try to create <laughs> brand recognition, that's what you do. But if you actually want to drain, generate leads, you're using the internet. It, it's it's really funny, Glenn, because. Um... My my dad is a real estate agent too, and he's he's been in the game for for a long time. He's he's in his early seventies now, and he's all about you know plastering the car with his brand and plastering a, a trailer and leaving that somewhere, and all of it is really it, it's unmeasurable, right? So it's really hard to know if any of this is actually working. And what I loved so much about EXP when Dan and I were were considering making the change. Oh, coming on now 20 months ago, is that it was so innovative in the way that it was going to lead the charge into the future, right? It understood that the vast majority of people who start their home searches start it on the internet, start it on their phone at home, and they start looking at real estate, first of all, on their phone. So, you know, we're going to be able to beat those traditional marketing strategies because we're in someone's pocket all day, right? And that was... That was a big reason why I know that we made this shift and why we're excited to always kind of talk about what is EXP doing next because it's it's exciting and, and I think it's innovative uh, and something that realtors need in order to be successful in the 21st century here. So kind of, if you, unless you want to respond yeah, to that. Well, but, well, the, the other piece yeah. I, I want to just uh, sort of uh, mention is I, I think that uh, one, if you're, if you're an agent, um, uh, a young agent, uh, just getting started in the business, that is, you know, the and and you have some technology prowess. Definitely be focused on the the internet lead gen side of the business. You know, it, it, internet marketing is the the thing that can get you business. Literally within 24, 48 hours, you can actually generate some yeah. inbound leads. But yeah. when you do start to make money, and this is kind of my my follow on. Um, you, you do want to start to reinforce your personal brand in your local marketplace. So there is actually a value to the, 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 the bus stop bench and, and, the, and the sideboards and all those other things that we do see from real estate professionals. But do that as a reinvestment of your profits, not your primary driver, because it's a very expensive way to drive traffic to you as an agent. Mm -hmm. Takes takes a lot of time. There's no doubt. So maybe this is kind of a good a good segue into um, talking about maybe what your your vision is over the next one to two years for EXP. Because as we enter what is now a very different space than we were even just 18 months ago, uh, you know, all companies, including the realtors inside of them, have to become agile and and work within the marketplace that we're that we're, we're in. Definitely keeping low fees is is a big part of surviving through that particular time, uh, but not at the expense of value. And I would love to kind of hear from you what you think EXP's value proposition, is it going to maintain what it is currently over the next one to two years? Or do you guys continue to expand into other countries? Are you guys going to be looking at new technologies um, and, and possibly the integration of things like chat GPT and that, that kind of thing? Yeah, no, we're, we're we're definitely continuing to invest. I mean, I mentioned some of the things that we we've been doing mm -hmm. um, and and continuing to, to do from at the brokerage level. Uh, you know, we, we we have a competitive um, cap and split model, uh, as you know, as as agents that are with the EXP. Um, I, I say competitive because you can always find someplace cheaper. Uh, in the absence of value, you know, real estate brokerages compete on price. And, and we all know about the fact that, you know, if you don't charge enough, then as a, at the brokerage level, you're going to become a no frills brokerage, which for some agents, that's actually a value problem. Like they want to go there and, 
and there's a there's a real estate brokerage for everyone. But I always think about the idea that you know, the, especially when you think about a model like EXP, we're a partnership model, which means mm-hmm. that we're we're actually partnered with our agents. Their agents aren't there to just make the broker owner money. In fact, to some extent, you know, you look at you know the way we run, we run really thin thin margins uh, as a company. Um, you can go and look at our financials. I think we're, we run on about eight to eight point nine percent of overall revenue, and that's what we pay our bills with. And we've got over two thousand staff members inside wow. of that. Um, so it's a very, very low margin business for us. But inside of that, we have our, our revenue share and our equity model, and we continue to sort of iterate on what are the various value props to actually create a true future retirement structure for real estate professionals like that didn't exist when I got in the business when I got in the business 20 yeah. something years ago I mean I was a active agent in Bellingham Washington which isn't too far from you guys uh, up there in in Vancouver but uh, you know I was in I was out there listing and selling property at 35 years old but I'd been mentored by business people including my dad and others and I recognized that even though I was sold on this idea that I'm that I have a real estate business I realized very quickly that the business owned me because the moment mm-hmm. I quit selling uh, was the moment that I was out of business. And and that's mm-hmm. not actually a business um, worth owning. And, and, you know, some companies say, you know, business is worth owning and lives worth living. Yeah. Well, I can guarantee you that, that, that for 98% of real estate, well, actually technically 90% six percent of realtors because we have about four percent of, of realtors in the united states so for 96 percent of realtors they don't really have a business uh worth wow. worth uh, um, uh worth owning and so our whole thing was how do we build a model that ultimately puts the agent as true partners we just did a press release i don't know if you saw it on uh this last friday and i don't know when this video is going to get posted but we just did a, a press release on friday EXP in 2022 uh, shared $240 million of yeah. rev share and equity benefits with our agents brokers, not US dollars, but, you know, uh, the, the, so, but it's a big ass number, like huge. <laughs> um, yeah. you know, it's actually more than every other real estate brokerage and brand that shares profit, revenue, and or equity combined like combined wow. so we're talking like really? Keller williams kind of kind of created the profit share model uh we've got a bunch of copycats that are sort of doing some sort of revenue share equity model but be, even if you if you take all of those we actually shared more with our agents and brokers now if you do the if you do some further g- mental gymnastics i don't I, I'll, I'll just take a peek right now but i think you know exp has a market cap of uh of approximately you know one point nine billion dollars, so that's pretty good. I'm I'm single largest shareholder in the company. It's around about thirty percent, so it's a good number for me. I you know, certainly from a net worth perspective, it's more than I'll ever spend for you know my lifetime, my kids' lifetime. I mean, probably <laughs> multi generational. But if you, but if you actually think about the two hundred and forty million dollars, and you actually apply a, 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 a what historically has been the uh, the S and P 500, you know, average PE ratio for a company, which is around 15.9 percent. Now, right now, it's around 21 is the is the current PE for for a, uh, a S and P 500 company. But if you take sort of 15, that means that our agents and brokers beneficially own because of that 240 beneficially own an asset worth about 3.6 billion dollars. Like wow. The, you, you, you start to think about what is the power of this model? I mean, it's literally the craziest number you could think about. Like literally our agents and brokers beneficially, like, like obviously it's not an, an actual, uh, in actual terms, they don't have a share certificate, but they have a revenue share benefit and the mm-hmm. equity benefits combined $3.6 billion that of distributed wealth through a unique comp model that actually creates a true retirement for real estate. So for, for me, that's what gets me juiced and excited every day. Like it's not about, you know, it, you know, I, I'm reading right now, I'm sharing a book with, you know, basically everybody I talk to, it's called winning on purpose by Fred Reichel. 
So if you get a well, chance, you know, read read that book. But basically what it says is that if you literally love your customer, almost like, um, you know, you know the, the, the biblical phrase of, of love thy neighbor as thyself. But if you love your customer, in our case, our agents, as much or more than we love ourselves, then literally the, fee- the, 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 the feedback loop is such that um, you will actually create a company worth more than companies that focus on making money for shareholders. Um, it's actually counterintuitive because in every business meeting, they always bring up the profit loss statement and the balance sheet. Like that's kind of their, that's the language of business, right? And at some level mm. it's important, but once you've got to the point where you put, you know, food on the table and a roof over your head, life's got to be more than about making money. It's got to be about, mm-hmm. you know, who is your, who is it that you serve? And, and so for us, it's about serving uh, the agent. For for you, it's 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 serving in, in all likelihood your consumer, but also you have an agent segment to your business as well, where you're actually serving other agents because of sort of the affiliation with the XP. So that partnership model is um, such a powerful paradigm uh, that is really unmatched. And 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 the you know, I, and I feel for these guys, by the way. And gals, but um, you know, for, for the franchise models, if you're, uh, you know, if you own a franchise, um, um, or you, you, or you're a franchise, or you're stuck, like literally, mm. you're stuck because you can't change the model inside of your franchise to actually yeah. truly match the needs of the agents. And if you're a yeah. franchise, or you can't actually change the rules of the franchise because of franchise law to actually serve the needs of the agent in a modern economy. So you're basically hooped. Um, and, uh, and and I do feel for them, by the way, because I actually, at the end of the day, I'm about the agent, no matter what brand you're with, uh, mm. I want the agent to win because they're the ones that at the end of the day, you know, came up, have been coming up through the ranks. They went and got licensed. They're trying to figure out, you know, how to go out there and make sales. They're trying to figure out how to build a business, but Fundamentally, the business model for them was flawed from the get-go because they were the, all the models were built, you know, years and years and years ago. I mean, Remax showed up in what the 1980s, right? And 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 that was sort of this innovation on on agent comp, but we didn't have the internet, so it was all physical, bricks and mortar based. And and mm-hmm. you go back to you know Coldwell Banker whenever they got together you know, in the 20s or 30s, you know, those two guys got together. I mean, at that point, there was no MLS, you know, and that was even, you know, more antiquated. I'm sure at some point, you know, somebody, you know, started to go, I just built a hut. What the hell do I do with it? Can you help me sell it? And that was the origins origins of real estate. So, you know. I like that, Glenn. That's amazing. It's it's actually, you you do such a great job of explaining what we've said so many times on our podcast, which is it's financial alignment and agent reciprocity. It's, you know, if, if anything, the more traditional brokerages, the agents are almost on paper anyhow serve, you know, the, the managing broker or the brokerage house with their fees and their splits. But it feels like EXP has reversed that and recognizes that it's the agents who bring the value to the brokerage. Right. And that's where when we share in this reciprocity model uh, or revenue share model, that's where it actually makes sense. Because if I now provide someone with, you know, extreme value in my downline, I only want that person to succeed. I no longer really compete with that person. At the end of the day, if that person goes off and does their own thing, I'm all for that because I share in their success and in their benefit. And that's the brilliance of this, in my opinion. Right, and and then we 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 went one step further because we're all equity shareholders, even agents that we haven't attracted into our personal rev share organizations, um, they're actually still business partners because as they succeed, um, you know they're they're part of the larger company that we're all shareholders of. So it's all you know aligned compensation is probably the one. If there's an innovation that we we created in the real estate industry, it was the the is is the aligned compensation model um, leveraging 
uh, technology because with without the technology component that wasn't available when I got in the business in 2002. I mean, we were physically um, based brokerage models back then in 2002 mm. because that's where the high speed internet was. You know, no, nobody had <laughs> um, you know high speed internet was dial up, and you were lucky if you had a 56k baud modem. If you remember back in <laughs> I, those days, I, I forget those days. <laughs> Yeah, I mean those are those are painful. It's like <laughs> wait for the dialogue. Then, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then and, and and now it's just it's just fast everywhere. It doesn't matter mm -hmm. what you're using, whether it's your your phone or your you know, obviously your your your, your uh, you know home office. Or now you got Starlink. I so I've got to you know I do a little boating in the in the San Juans and the the Gulf Islands, but. Um, you know, I've got the Starlink now, and I got high speed internet even on the boat, so it's just That's crazy. So cool. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, let us also congratulate you on being able to have given back almost a quarter billion dollars to the agents that that love this model that's that's got to feel great and it's reminiscent of uh, of another book if we're going to mention books called the go-giver which is doing exactly what you're doing you're giving first and people just naturally want to reciprocate and uh, and again thanks or congrats on the realty.com and, and .ca announcement and, and of course we appreciate you announcing it here it's i'm hearing a lot about evolution and being on the cutting edge and always evolving and that makes me very curious like is exp working with or dabbling with or about to buy companies that are working within the artificial intelligence space? Yeah, so um, we, we, we are doing some internal experiments with it, um, uh, you know, trying to figure out, you know, where it fits in, in the whole thing. We, we've, uh, uh, we've actually been um, promoting uh, at some level like Jasper uh, AI, so you can check that out. I mean, it's a cool platform. Um, as well, I think there's we, we actually have an affiliate relationship with them um, to to get a little bit of discount. I don't even know how to get to it, but um, we, we <laughs> but I, we, we like the the, the 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 platform. If you haven't used it, it's really quite cool. You can literally have it uh, write your um, you know your property descriptions for the MLS. And it does a freaking great job. You put in some basic data, and and if you're not good with the English, English language and sort of composing that maybe English is a second language or what have you, uh, you know, it, there's some really cool stuff that it can, it can do um, that can make your life a lot easier as a, as a real estate professional. Um, I, I wrote a LinkedIn article um, uh, a while back and it was basically, you know, about AI it kind of scares the crap out of me um, because mm -hmm. You know, at one level, it's really helpful because it does sort of algorithmically create some cool stuff from a realtor perspective. But, uh, you know, nowadays you look at the, the art, the photos, the stuff that ac actually can design. I mean, it's going to be eventually you're not going to know if you're talking to a human being versus uh, versus an A.I., and uh, uh, and then, you know, you go one step further. I mean, eventually. You, you, we could be having this conversation. You might not even know that you're talking to an AI. You know, I might have an AI <laughs> version of myself. So I, there, there's there's some things that are um, that I really like about it because it's from a just a composing and sort of helping just some basic blocking and tackling of real estate. It works really well. I think from a Q and A perspective, it's going to be a great tool. Um, so your chat bots from a from a self help perspective, and maybe even learning about neighborhoods and that type of thing can be really, really cool. Uh, but I think that it, at the end of the day, real estate agents will actually be more valued longer term because of AI and the fact that they are human beings. Um, that that was that, that was that was going to be my 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 actual holistic question behind what Dan asked is. What are what are really sort of you know because when ChatGPT first came out, I, I spoke to so many realtors who were like, oh, you know, our days are numbered now <laughs> with artificial intelligence, right? And I'm I'm thinking to myself, you know, I, I've spoken I've spoken to some really intelligent people in this space, and they're not so convinced that the human being element is just going to disappear like we like we think it is. And I'd love to get kind of maybe your thought process on that, because as much as we want to integrate the tools into AI, do we really feel like it's going to replace us as agents? And I think that there's a human element that takes place inside of real estate 
that so far can't be replicated. And I'd love to know maybe what your thoughts are on that. Yeah, so here's the way I, I, I my analog is, is using a company in the States. I think they may actually be starting to operate in Canada as well, uh, Redfin. Um, mm-hmm. and, and, and so Redfin, when they showed up on the scenes around 2006, 2007, 2008-ish, they raised hundreds of millions of dollars. I don't know how much they raised, but they raised a lot. And they lose a lot of money, by the way, as well. But um, everybody thought that if – so they did – they do commission rebates to buyers, and mm-hmm. they offer you know reduced uh, listing commissions – um, but they disintermediate the traditional real estate professional from the relationship. So it's all this sort of self servicey kind of kind of thing. Hey, you get you get you know somebody to come out and show you the home. Somebody else will negotiate the contract. Somebody right. else will sort of do the contract to close. And they're all um, on salary based things. So you at, at one level you can go, hey, if you can figure that out, maybe there's a model there that makes some sense and whatever. But here's the thing, um, uh, the agents that are on sort of the, we call it the salary base, they're not hungry. And mm-hmm. when they're not hungry and they're not sort of self-motivated, they don't actually pick up the phone. They're not proactive. They're not actually helping you at the consumer level because they're just sort of going through the motions. Um, and and the discounts um, were the things that, that Redfin was was betting on that would create loyalty among consumers. Well, it turns out that lo- consumers actually aren't motivated by commissions that much. Um, it's a, it's a, it's, it's an element of it, but it's, it's actually less important than working with the, somebody they know, like, and trust. And so that's the real value of a real estate professional, somebody that you know, like, and trust. And you know that if you pick up the, if you call them at nine at night, they're there to kind of, walk you through the process of where you're at emotionally in it. I mean, if mm-hmm. you're a real estate agent, you've been in business for a while, you know, <laughs> you've probably taken calls at some pretty crazy hours with consumers because it's a, oh, it's oh, emotionally yeah. taxing for them and they need an outlet. Um, mm-hmm. And, and I don't, I just don't fundamentally see that an AI is ever going to be that trusted advisor who emotionally can actually connect with you. Cause there's no way, a machine has a human experience. Like it just, mm-hmm. it just doesn't happen. And we as human beings need some, a human with a human experience to help us through what for a lot of people is the most significant transactions of their life. Now, does that mean that they can't get some advice from AI? Absolutely not. AI is going to be great for advice, but mm-hmm. actually doing the real estate transaction that is emotionally taxing. You're, you're going from, you know, making whatever your uh, an individual's making a hundred thousand dollars a year, eighty thousand dollars a year, one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year, and they're buying their first home, and they've saved up for months and months and months, maybe years, for that down payment for the home, and they're going to just hand it to an AI and go pick me a house? Not going to yeah, happen. I don't see it. Yeah, I agree. Wow, fascinating. Um, well, uh, Dan, I think. Um, I, I kind of want to talk a little bit, uh, and Glenn, I, I don't know if you do too, but we've recently seen some of the uh, copycats to EXP that are, are popping up now. And I, I think as we get into the future and as EXP continues its success with its model, it's going to try and be replicated probably a hundred different times through a hundred different competitors. Uh, why Why do you think EXP's is it because you guys are first to market that you guys will likely maintain your position? Or do you think it's because of uh, the inability of competitors to really create a competitive model? You, like it took us 11 years before there was actually a, 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 a copycat that showed up of any, any, any merit, I guess, so to speak. I mean, mm-hmm. the number of people had sort of tried various iterations of it over the years and, and, and this and that. Um, what I find interesting is of the copycats, um, that, or uh, of the company, well, I, I wouldn't call them copycats, but of the companies that actually do the model that we, we created, um, we're the only company that actually has somebody who actually sold real estate, ran a team, knows what it takes to actually be in the business of actually being in the agent's shoes. 
et cetera. And I did it from truly a creating a model that served me when I have my agent hat on. Like, so in 2007, I said, if we ever build a company, we're going to do revenue share, not profit share. None of these other companies ever had that epiphany. They never understood mm. fundamentally what it meant to actually build a company that was agent centric. We were the first company to share equity with our agents brokers. Why? Because I went into my manager um, at Prudential at the time and said, hey, I was the number three agent in the office, number one buyer's agent. But my my first full year in, in the business, 2003, and I said, hey, what, um, how can I get equity? I'm, I'm, I'm here to build. I'm here to be partnered with you. And they said, well, we're, not, we're, we're not sharing equity. It was two, two guys that owned it, and they owned it 50-50, and they weren't sharing equity. It's like, and, and if they would have and, – and I went to Keller uh, after that, and the office I was in, same conversation, um, said, hey, I'm, I was 30% of the office volume uh, of the single office I was in. I went in and said, hey, I'd like to get some equity because I'm contributing. And I know because I was on the ALC at the time, the Agent Leadership Council, and, and understood financially the books uh, because of the open book company. I'm like, if you know, I'm a big reason why you guys are profitable. Um, and I paid like $115,000 just in that one office in one year. Wow. Wow. I said, I said uh, I'd like some equity. And they said, no, we're not, we're not giving equity uh, in the office. And, and somebody who was a regional owner offered me a 1% interest um, that he owned. Um, but then I read the franchise document. And I was like, uh, you got to be crazy. For 1%, I got to agree to this. There was, uh, you know. And so I, I, I passed on it. But for me, equity ownership was, was something that, that eluded me at the agent level. And I was willing to pay for the equity, by the way, in both those scenarios. Um, but... Uh, um, but for me, we, we were the first company to offer true equity in the brokerage. And all these came because um, I was actually in the seat in the in, uh, of the agent, actually, as, a, as an entrepreneur, thinking about it from that perspective. Um, everybody else who's come after us are copycats. They don't know, know why we've made the decisions that we made. They just know it's mm -hmm. working. So all they can mm -hmm. do is copy it and hope for the best. Um, you know, we bought Zucasa. We partnered with Realty.com, Realty.ca. We've got some other partnerships that I haven't uh, talked about. Uh, we've got First Movers Advantage, but I can have conversations to actually recognize what truly is going to add value to agents. Mm. Whereas the rest of these people are sort of like, uh, they, they're kind of like blind people, you know, walking around uh, an elephant of, of the elephant of real estate uh, and they think they know what agents want, but they actually don't because they've never sold real estate. So that's kind of my, my take is that they're, um, you know, hey, there's going to be there's going to be a, a bunch of companies competing for number two. There always will be, um, you know, and, uh, um, and and right now there's 22 companies. And this came from somebody who was uh, uh, at KW. So according to him at KW, they were tracking 22 different companies that were copying some version of the revenue share, uh, profit share, equity model. Um, and, uh, you know, there's, you know, I, I could go go down a list, but there's, you know, five of them that are getting traction. There's, you know, one from New York, one from Florida. There's one from North Carolina. There's one coming here from France. There's, you know, mm -hmm. there's like a boatload of them, but not a, not any of the ones that in, in the top, actually one of the top five, um, and they're small and they're not, they're not making you traction, but, uh, uh, but only one of the, those five actually has somebody who's actually sold real estate. That's actually helping guide the company at the, at the most senior level of the company. Interesting. You'd think that would be a paramount foundational <laughs> element about building a company is being, uh, having that experience of boots on the ground first. And, I mean, you know, obviously, understandably, with the immense success that EXP has had with the model that's now been proven for 15 plus years here, of course, it's going to be emulated and sought after. So it kind of makes me question, like, if we were to fast forward, I don't know, 20 years into the future, do you think the whole evolution of real estate is going to go digital or will, will there always be some form of a need for your sort of brick and mortar or franchise model? Well, I, th I, I don't think bricks and mortar is going away entirely. Um, there's, you know, you, you, you know, if let's if if 
a hundred percent of the real estate brokerage went, if it would all became digital platforms, then where would be the innovation? The innovation would be mm. putting bricks and mortar in place. Um, mm. So you think about if in, in the reason why, you know, we stood out for, and, and continue to stand out is we're, we're, um, in a industry that's you know ninety five percent is bricks and mortar based, um, we're part of the five percent that doesn't have bricks and mortar, and so that becomes that's to some extent our innovative lever. Um, it, it's it's our it's it's our enabling technology for everything else is to reduce the cost of running the brokerage, so we can actually put a bunch of innovations in on the agent's behalf. But eventually. Um, and you look at the, even Amazon using them as an example, you know, they're, they're an online marketplace, but they're actually now starting to put into malls and different places in America, hmm. physical Amazon spaces. So I think there's always going to be some element of bricks and mortar. It, we have a lot of, you know, top agent that run EXP realty branch offices where they actually spend the money on supporting their own branch office because for them, the, the branch office uh, actually m makes sense, um, but it's not a it's not a requirement. It's not a um, it's more for them. It's a nice to have, but maybe they're in a resort community and they've got lots of foot traffic and they've got a great location. Maybe they own the building. They've invested in, in commercial real estate. Whatever. There's a number of reasons why there will always be a, a, a bricks and mortar component for some percent of the industry. We're not going 100% digital, just like. Amazon's not going to put out the, you know, put out of business, the local real, uh, um, retail outlets. Uh, there's going to always going to be a, a need to run out and grab something from the store. Like Whole Foods is not going away, even though Amazon <laughs> owns them. Um, right, it's not going to be like right. a, a warehouse where they just deliver goods to your, your, your house. But uh, I still use Amazon like three times a week, but I, and I go to the store. So I think there's, there's always going to be a need for some real estate from an agent perspective and even for some consumers some consumers are going to prefer the physically based brokerage model um and uh and, and and that's the great thing about real estate you know there's a whole bunch of different models that can coexist we've got i don't canada's got what well over a hundred thousand agents i think in canada in the u.s we've got over 1.5 million real estate professionals and uh you need to always be innovating and differentiating in order to stand out among the competition. That's pretty awesome. That kind of covers everything we wanted to talk about today and, and really encapsulates, I think, the value proposition that is eXp and, and going forward, whether you're a consumer, whether you're an agent, uh, there's a lot of reasons to like eXp. So Glenn, um, really appreciate you coming on. Hopefully this won't be the last time. We'd love to have you again and carry on the conversation about uh, the trajectory for eXp and how it will continue to be the most agent-centric model. I think, and we think, that exists today. So thanks again for coming on. Really appreciate it. Th thanks, Dan. Thanks, Ryan. And of course, if I have anything to do with it, uh, we will be the most agent-centric <laughs> model in real estate. So thanks again. Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you. We're happy to be along for the ride. This has been incredible. Have an awesome day.